What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this uh, Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. It's about uh, 1 14 p.m. California time. And the latest quake, a 2.6 earthquake out around the Puerto Rico area. That area is still moving around the uh, Caribbean plate area. Also, we had a pretty good 6.5, pretty large earthquake there in the Peru region. Let's go ahead and check out this activity here on the latest USGS map. This earthquake struck earlier this morning inland, about 100.3 kilometers into the uh, subduction zone here of the Peru-Chile Trench. That's going to be this 6.5 right here. Definitely a lot of earthquake, uh, historical earthquake activity within this region and some deep movement, of course, up and down the entire length of the uh, Peru-Chile Trench. I believe this is uh, kind of in the region where we've seen that, uh, oh, that seven-pointer that struck last year within this region. I think it was up just north a little bit. But either way, South America has been relatively quiet for the most part, and uh, things just kind of uh, finally starting to build up enough in the region to the north to produce that uh, 6.5 earthquake in the Peru region. Uh, a little bit of activity prior to that. Uh, last night, a couple fours further down south. Looking at uh, a little bit of deeper activity down here as well. Um, so yeah, a little bit of movement taking place out here on the uh, earthquake map today. Middle America Trench still showing some activity kick up here off the coast of uh, El Salvador and the Guatemala area. Uh, looking at a uh, couple fours, upper four magnitude earthquakes striking within this region. Also some deeper activity as well. Uh, most of this movement striking uh, earlier this morning, it looks like. Here's the Puerto Rico area where uh, things are... Let's bring this uh, magnitude down a little bit so we can see all the mag magnitudes. Still swarming out here on the southwest part of Puerto Rico. Uh, not as active up here to the north along the Puerto Rico Trench, but we're still seeing some uh, activity kick up here in the 2 and 3 category uh, throughout the morning and uh, yesterday especially there with uh, all the activity ramping up and uh, of course a lot of, uh, a lot of activity over here to the west as well still kind of watching this region pretty closely as we had seen some further movement down here last week and uh, the general swarming and the Haiti activity all just kind of pointing towards possibly something else uh, popping off in the area West Coast, what do we got going on up here in the Cascades? Some activity continuing around Mount St. Helens there over the last 24 hours, and also a little swarm of activity. This is some pretty deep movement here. I see how far. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty deep, looking at about 18 kilometers or so uh, for at least one of these 2.5s here in this little swarm of earthquakes uh, a distance away from Mount St. Helens. Don't believe it's associated with volcanic at all, uh, more or less possibly uh, actually definitely located uh, into the subduction zone it looks like uh, we were getting a little bit of trimmer activity uh, in the region let me check that out here real quick see if we can bring up the trimmer map from yesterday uh, there's a little activity up north and into southern oregon but uh i don't know i'm, I'm not 100 percent certain if they're showing all the trimmer activity here on this map uh, kind of just like the earthquake activity that's been popping up in Northern California. It just kind of seems like maybe uh, one out of ten earthquakes they'll post one uh, one notification here. So just just a little odd. Either way, watching deeper movement up here into Washington and around Mount St. Helens area. Mount Rainier getting in on a little bit of activity as well. Nothing significant uh, uh, to take note other than that little swarm. Oregon looks pretty quiet throughout the, uh, the uh, volcanic area here. And I'm uh, going to be up there this weekend looking at some uh, some volcanic stuff. Uh, so look forward to some live video. I'm going to stop at uh, quite a few places up there. Uh, right around the central Oregon, outside of Bend area uh, this coming weekend. And uh, uh, get some video and whatnot. And maybe talk to a few folks. See, uh, see if I can find out some more info about the uh, Three Sisters uh, activity up there. Uh, what do we got? Eastern part of Sierra Nevada, kind of calm today. Not a whole lot of significant movement. A couple earthquakes on the map uh, and the Ridgecrest area as well. Uh, but then again, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, just a little earthquake activity up and down the Sandras Fault as well. The uh, Pacific side of the plate boundary here shows, uh, looks uh, pretty typical, right? Not a whole lot of uh, specific swarming or any major quakes to note here on the map. Of course, over here in the Los Angeles area, 
Still seen some uh, continued earthquake activity in the microquake department range. But overall, just a typical day there in Southern California, it looks like. Intermountain West regions as well. Uh, a little bit of activity throughout Oklahoma and Kansas. And the eastern part of the country looks pretty quiet for now. Uh, still seeing a little swarm of activity here into the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, that kind of kicked up last night in this region. 4.9 looks like to be the uh, largest quake there within that area. And it's pretty shallow too. Back before the uh, the uh, subduction zone. So this may be a, may be a sign of uh, potential further subduction earthquakes here in the near future. Uh, movement outside of the uh, Lucian Trench as well. It looks like right around the Davidoff Volcano getting in on some activity as well. And some further activity to the west uh, with a couple twos and threes kicking up there in the area of that uh, volcanic, uh, volcanic islands there. One more earthquake here. Kind of a deep one, right? Don't even have to look at the depth here because any earthquakes that do strike here within this region are normally pretty deep. 4.2 uh, off the coast of Russia into the sea at 375.6 kilometers. Uh, got the Kuril Kamchatka Trench here, major player, but we're still watching this region. It's keep getting these subduction zone and deep earthquakes, but no, no uh, release of potential strain here on the subduction zone part. Uh, movement outside of the Philippines there, along the Philippine plate, uh, looks like uh, a 5.0 striking, 57 uh, kilometers below the surface, and also some activity around the Indonesia area. Tonga has calmed down. I don't see any earthquake activity, at least in the four range within this region. Same for the Kermadec Trench. This is activity from last night. We did have one more 4.9 earlier this morning. Uh, but overall, things kind of calming down following that uh, 6.5 over here in the uh, South America region. Uh, Middle East, fairly quiet. A couple earthquakes throughout the Afghanistan area. And uh, Mediterranean Sea, all quiet as well. We did see this little earthquake pop up here, 4.8 in the northern mid-Atlantic ridge. Um, let's see what else we got here. Yellowstone activity is pretty calm. Uh, the signature that you see here on the graph is from that 6.5, <clears throat> making its uh, self known on the seismograph stations way far away. Wyoming to Peru, pretty good distance, right? But a large earthquake can definitely be picked up here uh, by these seismographs. And that's what we're seeing there, displayed on many of the graphs <clears throat> throughout the area. Uh, let's see what else we got. Solar weather has been relatively quiet. Uh, I don't know if it kicked up anymore last night or not. They did have this in the green. Looks like, remember last night we were doing the update video? Things were starting to calm down. Everything was back to green, saying that uh, it wasn't uh, as strong as expected. Well, it looks like it came back in again last night and ramped back up. It's just, you never know. Look, the word surprise, right? That's always an interesting word to hear when it comes to forecasting anything for the most part, right? This was unexpected. A geomagnetic storm is currently in progress thanks to the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field pointing way southward. So, yeah, kind of kicked up there to uh, K index of 5, indicating that G1 class storm. Nothing significant, but it did spike up there on the KP indexes. But uh, overall, it looks like things should mellow out. Uh, solar flares have dropped a little bit in the percentage, uh, at least for the major flares go. 90% chance of a sea flare from the Earth's side uh, facing sunspots here. 2936 still pointing right at us. And we've got some further ones coming around the bend uh, that will be pointing right at us too here uh, very soon in the coming days. So, all right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Once again, just uh, make sure you got uh, the notification bell clicked here uh, for this channel and make sure you subscribe. We'll be going up here with Missy Mimi's this weekend to check out the volcanic activity and other volcanoes in the central Oregon area this weekend. Uh, I think it'd be a pretty cool learning trip here and we'll post some videos and we will go live pending. We have service up there, but uh, uh, if you want to be notified when we go live, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell. Uh, so you can get notified from YouTube when we go uh, when we go live on the uh, location up there in Oregon. So, all right, guys. Uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much about it. Uh, Weather-wise, looks like uh, winter is making its way back uh, east into the plains and the eastern part of the country. But man, we're gonna cook here in California uh, this weekend and next week. Talking about highs in the upper 70s and middle 80s possible, uh, and that's not that's not good. 
We had uh, some pretty good rainfall this winter. We're talking November and December, it was wet, super wet. We had lots of rain, but not a drop of rain in January at all. Zip zero. It's been completely dry. And uh, it's looking that way uh, well into February as well. It's not, uh, it's not good. Not a good sign for the uh, drought conditions out here along the West Coast. I just hope we don't have any fires start up. I'm just not ready for the smoke and everything here in the valley because it's just, uh, it's, it's horrible. I think if we have another bad fire season, I'm just going to pack up and move, <laughs> move somewhere. Uh, I know there's fires everywhere, but gosh darn it. Uh, I need to live somewhere where there's at least a little bit greener uh, area environment, a little bit more moisture in the air and not as many fires. So, all right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Stay safe. We will chat you guys a little bit later on this evening with an update. Peace out.